How far are you willing to go for revenge? That's the question asked of Corporal Melaling Arity, a former armored trooper pilot who has a hit list and a chip on his shoulder, a chip which is located somewhere under that massive anti-armor rifle that he's looking around. He goes and kills people. A lot of people. Some of them even have it coming. If this sounds reductive to the sake of comedy, you're right, because this series is about a mile wide and an inch deep. The catch is that to understand what Melalink is kind of relying on you to know, you also have to know Votoms, which is harder than you might think because that's a series that aired in 1983 and wasn't available until very recently on modern formats. Thank you, Made in Japan and High Dive. Now, when are we getting this show in too, right? More pointedly, the series is one of the more quote-unquote realistic of the real robot series out there, in the sense that it points out military corruption and how the people responsible for maintaining endless wars are making money off of the corpses it leaves behind. It also features a more realistic idea of what Mecha would look like in a proper combat situation, with the machines being very small comparatively, and not having super crazy variants designed only for the sake of making a whole bunch of plastic models. No Ace Customs here like a dogfighting space mech, this is only slightly removed from what we consider to be power armor. The whole reason this is of any import at all is so we can explain that the guys that Mellow Link is dealing with are the guys on the Gilgamesh side as opposed to the Balorant side that are ostensibly the baddies, I guess? Votoms makes it pretty clear that everybody roughly above the rank of Staff Sergeant can get fucked. Votoms also airs on the side of, war is hell, no really, I mean it, since the alternative is doing that, hey, aren't robots cool thing, that is so easy of a trap to fall into. Sometimes it works better than others, but Ryosuke Takahashi does it better than most. It helps that he tries to do it at all, of course, but I'm belaboring the point. Takayuki Kanda was the teammate of Takahashi, and does an admirable job following his lead and his script here. He knows the deal, after all, he was there with Takahashi for Dugram. So with all this former baggage in mind, how do we find Mellow Link in the situation he's fallen into? Well, somewhere in this massive interstellar shit show that is the Third Galactic War, because the first two weren't enough, I suppose, Mellow Link and his platoon got used as scapegoats in the Plan Bendal scandal. I'm going to say that as few times as possible. This scandal involved a stolen shipment of Jigerium, which necessitated getting some otherwise good people shot to death. But Mellow Link has the devil's own luck and was able to make off with a rifle and his life to come back around and pop off the guys responsible. To what end? Well, it makes him feel better, I guess. With this and a lot of Japanese revenge stories, it's not a question of, now the baddies are dead so I can go back to a normal life. Rather, it's a case of bringing some sort of justice or balance to a situation. It's a really simple objective, though, as the series goes on, that proves not to be enough to really get the job done. Generally, it's considered a very bad idea to try and pull one over on highly trained anti-vehicle specialists, especially if the main method you have of defending yourself is with those same vehicles. That's where the Votoms universe is uniquely qualified to make this particular concept work. If they tried to pull this with Gundam, it would feel completely insurmountable because of the sheer size difference, though that's not to say that people on foot have never taken out a mobile suit before. But for reference, mobile suits are about 20 meters tall, and an armored trooper is just south of four. Sure, that's a hell of a lot of robot to deal with, but you can mess up an AT a lot easier than you can a mobile suit. Plus, there's that whole nuclear reactor thing to worry about. At any rate, because of this slightly more even to match up, Mellow Link stands a ghost of a chance hunting down the superiors that sent his team to the front lines without their bots to try and slow the enemy down. Rear guard actions are hard enough to manage without your superiors trying to get you killed but with a lot of luck and a lot of clever tricks, they manage to hold out. This is where Mellow Link gets his particular skill set and an additional death wish for no extra charge. And so begins his Rambo-esque revenge plot where he systematically stalks and murders a bunch of officers at least 10 years his senior with nothing but an AT rifle and a pile driver. Amaze what you can do when you're unhinged, huh? The meat of the OVA is... Mellow Link goes to a locale and kills a man, destroys what has to be astronomical amounts of military hardware, and toddles off to the next episode. That, reductive as it may be, is the gist of the series end to end, but it's far from what anyone would consider terribly complex. Mellow Link is fairly staid, and he doesn't have a whole ton to say, which is why Lulucy Ramon and Lieutenant Carradine are always near at hand to make sure there's some background to be given. Lulucy is some sort of entertainer, card shark, whatever the plot requires, and Lieutenant Carradine is investigating the Plan Bandal scandal for his own reasons. 
which provides more of a nuanced look at the way the things are shaking out, rather than simply the perspective of Hunter and Hunted. The actual plot itself largely does not involve Melolink, except for his appearance, to kill the episode's target, which means that the strength of the show has to come from the Predator-esque lure and trap. They do this in various locations that include jungles and forests and arenas and even a downed spaceship where Melolink is on the receiving end of being hunted. Unfortunately, this makes the series exceptionally easy to watch on 1.5 speed. I hate to admit it, but this series, while fun to watch, is not something you watch for the plot. Now, normally I would consider this a knock against the series, but I feel the production itself knew that it was not out to make some sort of great statement. Revenge plots like the ones in Mellow Link don't ever end satisfactorily. This is a holdover from Samurai Tales, because revenge itself is ultimately self-serving, even if you're doing the universe a favor in the process. Mellow Link does complete his task, but his friends are still dead, and he's been turned into Swiss cheese every couple episodes. You're responsible for a dead pixel in a million-mile-wide screen. Tragically, this is the best that Mellow Link can manage. Ultimately, he's really ruined the chain of command on this planet, but there are hundreds of thousands of planets out there that he can't reach out towards. It's this bleak sort of outlook that makes Votoms as a whole really engaging. And while that might be a major feels-bad man for a lot of viewers, it's really helped to cultivate a fan base that keeps the series popping up every few years. So this is the part of critical review that can sometimes be a struggle. Do I look at what the show does well and mark against its strengths, or do I focus on what the show flounders at and mark against its weaknesses? Look, all I'm saying is that I'm glad I don't go in a score system. Mellow Link excels at being a grounded, violent OVA that has the chops to fit in with the wider Votoms world. It is a great how-to guide on making human versus mech combat interesting, and stays true to the core values of the series that spawned it. But it really doesn't do much aside from any of that. So, whereas Mazenkaiser SKL did the same sort of thing with a numbskulled bombast and a casual disregard for making sense and giving a squirt, Mellow Link does give us a character that we see in their quiet moments with a large cast with varied angles and intrigues, but it really doesn't do much else beside that. It's also four times longer than SKL, so that's not really a fair comparison, but it's fresh in my mind. So Mellow Link sticks its landing to the exclusion of all else, sort of like a nude gymnast, but man, it really stuck that landing. But I figure that particular mental image is enough to send you out on, so my final thoughts are that if what you've seen is interesting to you at all, go find it and check out Votoms while you're at it. You might not find the same effect I did, but the show is worth a watch overall. Otherwise, well, there's always another robot show, right? That being said, this is Professor Otaku, the greatest American anime critic, signing off. Music